Hello. <clears throat> Six months ago, we made a covenant, a pact, um, that we would do a presentation together. Because we hate doing presentations, especially together. Uh, so um, we're here now. We're very scared. Yeah. And we're just going to do it. So let's do it. Do you have the clicker? So, I have an uncle, <laughs> and uh, when I was a kid, he, I went to his house for holidays, and as he didn't know what to do with me, he gave me a computer, and he installed Premiere Pro. He downloaded uh, some videos of World of Warcraft, and he said, do something with it. And it was my first trailer. And I also have an uncle. <laughs> And my uncle was very cool because he had a video rental shop uh, business. So going to visit him uh, meant that I could go and just pick films off of shelves, go home, watch a ton of cartoons and cool things. And in every case, at the start of a video, uh, you know, you have all these go cool old trailers with one man with one desire and such. So that actually stuck with me, and uh, I think it might be why I'm doing this for a living uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, we're here to talk about the art of face melting. We won't have the time to actually talk about every part of face melting, uh, but we will go through some key uh, workflows and things that we, we use in our work. Uh, at Raw Fury, where we are. Um, just for the context, we are a team of uh, five people working uh, all over Europe. Um, we produce trailers, but all the kind of video, a lot of different kind of video. And sometimes we use um, externals to work with us. I think there's one in the audience. Where is he? Yay! Nice. Um, because we have a lot of trailers to do. Yeah, Raw Fury publishes around five to seven titles every year, uh, and we make at least three trailers for every game, and maybe even more or twice that. So there's a lot of work to do. Right. Some of the work that we've done uh, across the team over a lot of years, it's everything from AAA to indie. It's a huge, as you can see, diversity of game, and that's why we are a strong team. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, okay, done, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am a dad. There's a lot of trailer types, um, and they all depend on a lot of things. Mm. Like the state of the game. Is it possible to capture your game? We never work on a finished game, because when the game is finished, it is released. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, a game is long, and there's different beats. And we do a trailer for every beat. Mm. The release trailer, the release date trailer, the announcement trailer, yeah. extra. And of course, you need to know what your audience is. Sometimes you get a, a very cool opportunity to go to a, a big event to show off your game and your game is now nowhere near done, but you need to find a way to show it there because this is a good way to get wish lists and those are very crucial to selling the game later. Um, you might go into, you know, it might be just for YouTube or social media. It's it just very imperative to find what your audience is and that will determine what type of trailer you make. And of course, most importantly, <laughs> And just before that, uh, if you're doing a trailer for Japan or China, mm. yeah. it's going to be a very different kind of trailer. Yeah. And your budgets may vary. Uh, we work at an indie games publisher, so our budgets are not AAA. And we will try to find solutions to, to make as much bang for your buck uh, as possible. But if you have the budget to go live action or CG or hand sock puppets, 
that's great. Um, but we will show you some techniques that we use to keep those costs down to make trades. The ref cut. This is the first step of doing a trailer. This is a very basic version of your trailer uh, that show the general flow, the emotion, the atmosphere, the rhythm that you want to put in your trailer. Yeah. You, can you can use text, images. You can, if you want, if you like a shot in a movie, you mm. can put it in your rough cut. This is just to have a reference and to explain to your team or your client what you want to do. Because it's hard to express emotions or feelings with words. Yeah. If you are great at drawing or know someone who's great at drawing, you could create storyboards. These are, of course, a little bit easier to follow for someone. And especially if you make them animated like this, um, this reflects basically the, the final product to, to a T. Um, it's very crucial when you're working with, if you're doing in-engine cinematic or CG outsourcing, this will help you so much. Um, and of course, if you're working in an, in, in, in an engine. You can just put white boxes, a character, and try things. Yeah. It works. You, you work a lot like that yeah. when you do a trailer. It's just crucial to show what you're doing uh, to get everyone aligned, including yourself, what is going to happen during this production. Um. Hello? Uh -huh. Point it here. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is a rough cut made by uh, Pontus. Um, as you can see, this is uh, simple. <laughs> uh, but there's something very important missing in this video. Friends versus friends. Let me tell you about the friends that invested all they had on a shady site that looked like a scam. It said buy this magic cards to play the coolest game and fight against your friends with no consequence. That's Friends versus Friends coming out on May 30. Pre-order now. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, as you see, I, I already I have a microphone in my hand, and I wanted to sing that bloody song. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Um, and good luck getting that out of your head as well. But yeah, music edit. Music edit. This is the first thing we do in, Ruf uh, in the team of Ruf Fury. Uh, we always start with the music edit, because it will give you the rhythm of your trailer. and. In a trailer, the rhythm is important. Mm. Yeah, we have three main workflows depending on the project. And I guess the first thing is you, your game will have music of some sort, um, but that's not probably the greatest to have for a trailer. You can try cutting that down, but it might be hard to get those ups and downs that you need, that intensity that you need. Um, so there's a better option. But uh, more expensive. Mm. <laughs> you can hire a composer or even your game composer to create your music, but it requires to have some experience because you need to talk a lot with the composer. Who starts, the composer or you? Yeah, the chicken or the egg, basically, mm. for, for a trailer. Um. Or you can use stems, stems if you have a nice music. The stems are the different part of the music, like the voice track, the violin track. But it is a bit uh, complicated, and uh, I don't use it because I like when things are simple. But Roland, who likes complicated things, use it a lot. 
Yeah, I, I like the, the freedom that it gives me because so here is a, a track from Sable, the announcement trailer for Sable that was uh, that the song was made by Michelle Zahner of Japanese Breakfast and it's a great song, but it's two minutes and 45 seconds long and we needed to make something closer to a minute. So here I asked to get the stems, all the separated instruments and this way I could actually make something that starts to look like a trailer. You can see that the intensity is coming, going up and going up and then goes down. Um, so I made my own composition and, and working with Michelle then trying to find the, the best um, way to not destroy her song and she approved this and uh, it, I'm very proud of it, but anyway. <laughs> Do we have some developers in the audience? Yes, so wake up and listen. <laughs> Debug tool menu. We don't have the eternity to do the trailer. We need to be able to play your game quickly. So we need a debug tool menu. And we have a, a document that we've compiled with basically like minimum requirements and advanced and recommended requirements that we send to developers when they sign with Raw Fury. And this, then it's up to the developers to implement the minimum ones but the rest is optional. It depends on where you are in the project, if it's even possible to do. But of course, the more tools that we have, the better. And the minimum ones. The minimum ones <laughs> are being able to disable the UI. Because when we do a trailer, we don't only do one video. We do trailers for Xbox, PS5, PS4, Switch, extra. So if we add a UI, a Xbox UI, we can't show it if we put it in the Nintendo stores. Mm. So we do trailers without, without UI for that because mm. we don't want to do a trailer for each platform. Mm. And the other reason is that a trailer is short. It's just one minute. So you have to be um, go to the point. And sometimes heard or UI are a bit po polluting the shot. Mm. That's why we are disabling yep. it. Um, we need to mute the music. Yes. And the, this is a very important thing. Again, we, we don't have all the time in the world to capture your games, even though they're lovely. We love them. But uh, to be able to jump around and get the shots that we need, if you have an implementation of some form of teleport or save state uh, or just jump load a specific level, specific loadout, whatever it is, Everything like that helps us to just get our shots on time. This is, is a bit of a tough thing to have to play through a lot to get to that shot, and then you will screw it up. I will screw it up until I get it for like you know on the twentieth take. Um, so very important. And I wanted to show you a very advanced double tug menu we have at Raw Fury for the game Kingdom Eighties. Um, Kingdom has a lot of is it's not an old game, but Developers had the time to do something very nice. Um, so this is the debug tool. I can do all the thing I want. I can, have, I can give coins, change the time scale. I can um, randomize the appearance of my uh, main character. I can spawn all the characters I want. I can even control all the characters I want. Um, I can move the camera uh, as I want and teleport the player where I want. And like I say, you, you don't see it, but there's, I can save position too of the camera. I can change the weather. I can trigger some special event in the game. I can, of course, win or lose the game. And the saves and load are very important because, for example, in this game, when I need to do a fighting shot, I prepare everything. I put the monster in the right place, the characters in the other place, I build all the stuff I need, then I save. Then I record, I fail, <laughs> and I had to redo it again. And then I just have to load the first save I did. I don't have to do everything from scratch. So it wins a lot of, it, it's a gain a of time. Massive time saver, yeah. massive. Time saving, yeah. thank you, Roland. 
And here's, here's the thing. So when you play a game, you don't really think about it, but when you're playing a game, you're inside of it. You really feel a lot more than if you would watch the same shots on, in a trailer. When you watch a streamer play, you, you get the emotions of that person so you can feel what they feel. But you don't do that in a trailer, right? So for us, a way to, sh to show those emotions, show those, those different aspects of, of a game, we will try to, well, of course, with music, as you heard, but also with um, different angles, different camera angles, camera moves, to, to, to better tell that story. So in this case, uh, we, had a, we have a game called Sable. And uh, we, it's a first-person game. And the camera is stuck to, to the character and third person. Um, but we managed to get debug tools to uh, separate the camera from the, the, the player and have one person control. You can control both with mouse and keyboard and uh, control on the same computer. So uh, this is basically couch co-op. Uh, so me and Marcus would sit down in front of a, uh, just the same computer and play around and try to find cool shots. And you're trying to find the angles, trying to find the angle, wait for it, and that's it. That's in the trailer. That's lovely, right? And you can have a lot of fun with that. Um, it's also very difficult, because <laughs> we're all seeing the same screen. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm trying to run up the stairs, but wait for it, and that's the shot. Um, <laughs> and we, I, I looked at the recordings there, and we have like the first recording for this session was starts at like 12, and it ends at almost half past two. And with just two and a half hours, we didn't even feel that we were uh, playing the game for so long. Um, and here's an extra fun fact. Uh, when we had to do this trailer, I had actually started uh, going on vacation. And we have a, a little summer cottage in the woods in, in, in Sweden. And uh, we do have fiber there. So we have broadband connection. And uh, Marcus was in Stockholm sitting at the office, and I would connect through something called Parsec. I don't know if you know it, but uh, one of those connecting to a, a computer through the internet. And I could use the controller on that machine through my controller on my machine in my cabin in the woods. And together we recorded these shots, separated 200 kilometers, and just by chatting and trying to find it. And this is also where your rough cut comes back as a very important because you need to know what to record. So, of course, you have a shot list of, I need this vehicle, I need this setting, this character, etc., etc. So, a lot of fun. Yeah, because in Sweden, they have fiber everywhere. <laughs> Not in France. <laughs> yeah. Not in Saint-Aubin-du-Cormier. <laughs> and uh, you can see here that, you know, it takes a lot of practice to try to do it, and I'm tr constantly like, go right, go left. No, not that way. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and it just took forever, but you know, we were laughing. And I've muted the, the sound here, but it's basically us like, yes, no, idiot. Yeah, so that's <laughs> so tough like that. All right. Sometimes um, things happen, and you don't have the time to do a game capture, or you can't. So you have to find a quick solution. Um, in this case, um, we were supposed to have a CG trailer, but uh, we didn't have it. So we had a week to find a plan B to do an announcement trailer without capturing the game. Yeah. Game capture. But we had artworks of the game. So after a very long meeting, <laughs> We decided to do a 2.5D trailer. What is 2.5D? It's 2D layers that you put in a 3D space. And we have an expert, Marcus. So every person of the team was working on just one shot because this is very long. Mm. Veranda or horrible. So it can be a great solution yeah. if you can't do a gameplay trailer. Next. Yeah, the next step in this, you can do something um, called camera mapping. 
same, same thing. You have artwork, you have uh, illustrations, and then you can map those onto simple geometry to create a CG look. It's 3D, but it's you know, fake. Uh, but it's, it will definitely help you, you know, stay on budget. So for this game, Peraspera, uh, we had this amazing artist make these uh, very cool illustrations. And then I could map those uh, onto geometry in Blender. Use Blender, it's free, it's great. Uh, and get away with making shots like this uh, that sell an emotion more than you know the game. And then, of course, we go into gameplay after that. But uh, the reader, it's, it's a great way to get more mileage out of your artwork if you don't have the option, uh, other options. And if you really want to do a CG trailer, but you don't have the budget to hire a company, you have the chance to have a game that with a lot of different assets. So what you can do is an in-engine cinematic, and we have an expert here Hi. that will explain some tips. Yeah. Um, but going back to the thing that where you, when you have an opportunity to show a game at some specific event, that will give you a lot of views. Um, and we got that for this game, Ereban for the announcement. Uh, we got to be part of this Microsoft, huge Microsoft co uh, conference event. Uh, the game was not ready to be shown, uh, performance issues, etc. cetera. Um, but also, it's a big stage, you want to show something really you know, powerful. Um, so we're showing a cinematic version of what the game is, and this is all in game. The demo map, they have the, the main character, they have the bad guys. Uh, and then it's a question of sitting in Unity, Unreal, whatever engine you're using, using Timeline and Cinemachine, for instance, to create these shots uh, and get a really cool trailer out of it. Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's another example coming. <laughs> if you have a, for instance, very cool voice actor that you've managed to sign. And I had no idea how we did this, but we got the, a very cool actor to, to voice a main character for another game called uh, West of Dead. They say there ain't no such thing as a good death. Depends on which side of the gun you're on and what you're fighting for. I love that voice. Um, and <laughs> I got to give this man a spatula. <laughs> and why a spatula, you ask? Well, that's for another presentation. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the same uh, as I talked before, building blocks using Cinemachine in Unity, for instance, to string these things together. This is basically me interpreting the gameplay in a cinematic way uh, and trying to find things that in my rough cut, I've mapped this out, how I want the character to, to perform these actions, uh, and then trying to find those, uh, those animations. But at this point in the process, we actually didn't have an animator on the game anymore, and we were running out of time and budget. So I needed to find a better way, uh, a cheaper way to, to do this. And there is a great resource called Mixamo, and if you haven't used it, well, I see, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, a huge library of motion capture uh, data, really great, very visual, you can see everything. But of course, like, it, it doesn't have skeleton man with Ron Perlman voice going and shooting a bird, going behind a tree, whatever it is. You need to find the, the building blocks. And of course, yeah, there's a guy, there's a goalie right here. He's waiting for the ball. Okay, that, that guy does an uppercut. And you can just find those things that you need and mix them together and blend between the animations. And then, boom, there's your, anim your cinematic. And of course, you can have a bit of fun with it as well. They have a lot of fun stuff. So I sent this out to the team and got a good laugh out of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't be ashamed to use tools to save time. Uh, when I studied at Raw Fury, I was convinced that I was a bad video editor if I used tools because I need to do everything from scratch, nya, nya, nya. <laughs> And then I met Roland, Marcus, and Dino, and they use a lot of uh, plug-in tools, scripts, to win time, and it was a life-saving <laughs> 
thing because I could do trailer very quickly with that. We even used ChatGPT to write script for us in After Effects. But that being said, just to be very clear, we do not use AI to create any types of images or 3D models or any of the sort, because that's a very gray area and we do not really <laughs> condone it. But for script making, like I suck at uh, coding, but ChatGPT made me world champion. So it's great. Uh, and it saved me so much work being able to import text layers from a you know, text document into After Effects, putting it in, in, in After Effects, just like in after each other. And just it, it just works so flawlessly and it's lovely. So don't be afraid to use that. So now you have your shots, you have your music, your worth cut, and um, yeah. So video editing, it's 20% technical, 80% artistic. Mm. Why am I saying that? Because when I started my company, Yuko Creative, I went in a lot of video games event, and when I was talking to some people, mostly men, mostly developers, they said, hey, we know how to do a trailer. I know how to use uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I was like, no. Nah. Because video editing is a question of practicing. You can't, you can be good in technique, but don't know how to edit a trailer. Um, yeah, this is a lot about practicing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've seen this as well. And I mean, I, I, I've been making trailers for over 20 years and every project I start with a developer, there's always going to be that case of, yeah, but I, I made you know a, a video about our, our trip to Fiji. I know how to make a trailer. Yeah, that's a great video. I love it. Cool trip. But you know, let's let's make sure that we make this a collaboration and not a competition. That's great that you know some of it. That's awesome. But if we collaborate, <laughs> we will actually make something stronger than if we're trying to like. I'm only uh, working, you know, <laughs> against you instead of with you. Uh, so for us, that's, that's very important that we are on the same page and we'll try to find a, a solution that works for everyone, of course. Uh, you're actually ending, is getting close to the end now. Um, there is something that you need to set before you're done though. The visual branding of, the, of your tra uh, trailer and marketing campaign. And for this, you could use any of the key art that you have, any types of transitions that you have in the game, etc. And you, you string everything together so when someone sees your trailer, even when they just see a transition or a text, they will be reminded of that this is your game. This is your unique style. And we use this all through the campaign, just so it's coherent and consistent uh, all throughout. Otherwise, it's hard to keep track, right? There's so much out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Thank you for coming to this, <laughs> this trailer creation process um, talk. We're happy to have you here. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And no. <laughs> no. This is not finished. There's still one more step. And we call it. <laughs> it is rendering. I just love that sound. <laughs> Yeah, at this stage you're exhausted, your computer's burning up, you are burning up, um, you haven't eaten, you haven't slept, you're very tired. But you need to get your trailer into a bunch of different formats. For example, you need a trailer for TikTok, for Instagram, for Facebook, uh, for YouTube. You need to do a full version of the trailer, a 30 second of the trailer, a 50 Ten seconds of the trailer. You need to do this same trailer in English, in Chinese, in Japanese, in Russian, in uh, French. Um, 
and you need you need to do to do a trailer for uh, uh, depending on the age rating of your video so of the game so Peggy ESRB etc 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 but this is good because you want to be shown everywhere and it should be seamless uh, I, I talked to someone yesterday like, oh I didn't even know that you did that because I, I just saw it with in French and it was great I was like, yeah, but it's also in nine other languages, but you won't see those because you are in France, right? So, uh, and this will give you the, the most viewership of, uh, of your asset and people will know about you. So it's very important steps. We hate it. And if I could not do one thing of trailer editing, it would be this one. Mm. Uh, so anyone want to take this? Mm. Anyway. But you have to, to plan it in your planning because mm. It can be very long, very, very long. Yeah, the deadline is, when you have the deadline, you are like, yeah, this is when I should, should be done. But actually, you need to be done like a week before because you have all this stuff. And you know, Adobe stuff is really great, but it tends to <laughs> crash a lot. Um, sorry, Adobe. And you will be suffering through a lot of blue screens and stuff like that. And it, you have to plan for that. Oh yeah, now we're actually done. We've shipped the trailer on time, on budget. This is us. <laughs> we're very, very, This is very really happy. us at the end of the trailer. <laughs> yeah, and um, the for me at least, it's the most important part here is that before it goes out on the interwebs, uh, when I put it on Slack, this is how we communicate with our devs. I put it on Slack in the channel for for a specific uh, uh, game and you get the comments from the dev. Like, they're super hyped. There's 1,500 emojis, and it's just really, really great, and you're, you're incredibly happy to be at this point. And that actually, to me, it's, it sounds like a cliche, but it, it actually means more to me when I, I get that feedback from the devs uh, about something that we did together. And, it, and if, it's, if it's been a good collaboration, of course. Otherwise, it's like, thank you and goodbye. Uh, it doesn't happen. We are all not the same, and we will have differences, um, definitely. But. Yeah. And then you put your trailer on YouTube, and you <laughs> see the commentary section and all the trolls, and <laughs> they all say that it's a shitty trailer, and you cry, <laughs> but we are fine. <laughs> no. Yeah, you don't, don't think about those people. They're a small vocal minority. Fuck them. Yeah. And this actually brings us to the real end, yeah, I would say. End. So we are now going to take in any and all of your questions, and please go ahead. Sorry, when we rehearsed this this morning, it was three hours long. And now it's only 40 minutes. That's nuts. Hi. Uh, thank you for the talk. It was uh, great. Thank you. Uh, concerning rendering hell, uh, can't, you, can't you ease your life with scripts or chat GPT? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we could. I don't know. I haven't checked it yet. But I mean, nah. The, what you need to do is have plans and backups and have a, a dedicated render computer maybe. Um, and we have yeah. presets for every version? Yes, so you save time with presets, definitely. Um, so it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you also need to render out all the formats and we have presets for that. But you also have to be, when you set up your, your trailer and you're doing the wrapping, which would, will uh, consist of the titles calling out different things, you need to think about already when you're doing them that they need to be able to go into different languages. And if you're recording the game and you want to have gameplay with a specific language in mind, I mean, you're not going to sit and record the same shots nine times for nine different versions of the trailer. So you will make, you'll record it once with uh, telling the, the devs, like, okay, this text box, leave it blank, and then we will add the text in post. And this way we could do Chinese and French and German, etc. But that means that we have to sit and do those nine versions and do all those texts for every version. And that's, you can maybe automate some of that. Um, and we have. Um, Adobe does have some nifty tricks for that. Um, but it, you still have to just do the work. 
Um, and it, uh, yeah, it takes time. There's no shortcut, really. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, you were talking, uh, you were saying that you work with like small indie games and also like big AAA uh, games. Uh, I was wondering, well, I was asking for a friend. <laughs> Uh, what has a range of budget we, you work with, like, just roughly? Uh. I work on a uh, small game, <laughs> and you worked on yeah. very big games. Uh, I think it's it's hard to put. I mean, the difference is in the millions or tens of millions of euros, uh, or even more. I mean, the the biggest budget games that I work one on was in the Battlefield series, probably the Battlefield 3 or 4, uh, and then Star Wars Battlefront was a huge thing, but that's because it's also, it's Star Wars, that license is huge. I don't know what the budget was, but it's humongous, and it doesn't even compare like to in any dev, uh, and that can range from, I don't know, hundreds of thousands to millions as well. It doesn't, it scales, I think, depending on project. Sorry, no exact okay. numbers for you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, you mentioned you exported the trailers for TikTok and I imagine also Instagram and so there's a there can be a wide variety of frames and screen ratios. And I imagine that it's pretty challenging for image composition when you're in the vertical or horizontal mode. How do you, and when in the process, do you deal with that? Uh, I do everything from scratch. Uh, the, the, the most complicated format is for TikTok. This is like terrible, so you can choose to can I say it in French? Sorry. Please go yeah. ahead. Tu peux mettre un 16 neuvième dans le 9 16 e mais c'est pourri. Alors du coup, euh, souvent, ce que je fais, c'est que je refais mes plans dans After Effects pour réadapter, euh, réadapter le trailer euh, à ce format-là. Mais c'est le vraiment, c'est le pire format. Le format carré, ça va, mais euh, TikTok, c'est c'est horrible. I was saying that TikTok is horrible, yeah. and yeah, I had horrible. sometimes to redo everything in After yeah, Effects. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You, all games are wide, and all social media formats are tall. So it's just it's silly. But <laughs> so why don't we just put it on the side, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we need to do a lot of what you call in the film industry you call pan and scan. You have to do a lot of moving the picture within the picture. Um, so cropping it, everything down, and then that's an extra step. So for instance, here's an example. We have this game called Backbone, where you're, you have your characters on the left side, and then when you're talking to someone, the text is on the right side. In the wide widescreen version, they're separated like this, but if you do a TikTok, it's just going to be a blank screen in the middle. So what do you show the character or the text? Well, you can scan the image like this. Or in my case, I actually, I cheat a little bit, and I, I crop the image and I fake, mm. I move them together. So it it's cheating, but it's not cheating, right? You're just trying to show what the game is actually looks like without all the dead space in between. And that also takes a lot of time. Mm. It can be fun trying to find that way because then you're also designing like camera moves in your in your uh, edit. It's you start on the character, it pans to the right, and you see the text saying something and it goes back and something happens. Um, so it needs some creative fiddling to, to do that. Um, but yeah. Hi, thanks for the talk. For, for the talk. Um, I have two questions actually. So um, do you think the music in the trailer should match the music that's in the game stylistically? And second, do you have any advice for uh, music composers writing original music for trailers, specifically? Hmm? Yeah, mm, the yeah uh, <laughs> I think I have something here. So, you should, going back to the whole Battlefield stuff, like, I would be handed a song from marketing saying, 
use this song by Jay-Z, it's great. And I was like, it's not great. Um, we have to use it because now we have bought this for hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's great. And I say, <laughs> okay, you put it on a timeline and then you try to figure it out. Um, there is something to be said about using a well-recognized song to promote your game. I'm not saying it isn't, definitely not. Um, but for me personally, I always try to keep it within the realm of of uh, the game's music. And I think for we've managed to do that pretty well. E even in that case, when we had a Jay-Z song, we actually changed it to fit the Battlefield sounds and themes. So it's actually a remix. And then that, that works. Uh, Otherwise, I think... A, a good example yeah. can be the Kingdom Northland mm. trailer. It's a music that is not in the game. It's by, I don't know the name of the artist, but... Calandra, I think. Calandra yeah. or something. Mm. But the, this is very close from the game music. So there's... That's what we were, we were saying in the wrapping. It's mm. you have to keep it consistent, mm. except if you have a Jay-Z song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Calandra song. I mean, it's in this. It's made with lyrics that are matching the game. It's talking about what's happening in the game, and it has the sound that the game's composer is using a similar vibe because it's Norselands, it's Viking. Um, they're using the same instruments, so it does work. But it is a, a bespoke song that you've created just for that, and maybe just for marketing, or maybe for you know uh, the credits or the intro. Um, so it does vary a lot. Um, what was the second question? Uh, any advice for um, music composers writing music ah. specifically for a trailer? Right. I think here it's uh, the, the collaboration between you and I is going to be the key here. Like we need to talk <laughs> and talk a lot um, and try to find that, that um, fluid way of working and be able to go back and forth because we've I've used that a lot of times as well with compos composers, you basically you, t you take they make something I take that I cut it up horribly, but it works, mm. and then you send that back and they're like oh yeah I'll fix this because then they know what to do and they just fix the transitions and they're like now it works and they send it back to me and I'm like ah can we just move this, uh, and then we do that back and forth and at the end it's going to be awesome because it's going to be like Mwah! hand in glove. Right, so yeah, let's and, talk. And, and maybe if you can play the game, mm. if you are doing the music just for the trailer, not for the game, play the game. It's very important. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I had a small question about the debug, the debug uh, menu. Would it help you uh, if you had access to cameras specifically designed for the social medias? Uh, would it be uh, <laughs> a bit uh, stepping on your creativity, on your liberty? Great. Question. What a good idea. <laughs> um, depends, I think, on w in the marketing campaign. We might the brand manager will set up a marketing campaign for the game, and they will might just have like, yeah, we're in this beat. We're actually just targeting this specific platform. And in that case, yeah. using that camera is it could going be to be very key. useful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Why redo it? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do that. Call me. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, around the beginning, you were talking about the way you use separate controls for characters and camera to do different uh, shots. But these ways of um, filming the action is not actually what happens uh, when you play the game. So do you often make trailers entirely with that? Or is it always a mix between real gameplay and that to create rhythm? And did you have, uh, did it happen 
that you got the feedback of being um, of giving false yeah. expectations. Just um, not for the Sable example, but capturing a game and playing a game is very different. We never play the game. We capture. We are setting up a shot, a special shot for the trailer. Because as Roland said, it's hard to give emotions with just a video of one minute, so. Yeah, um, that's a good question. So he here's my take uh, on this. The, there's always a mix. It's always a mix is, if it's not set up to be 100% like a CG thing, um, it's always going to be a mix. So you might have an intro that, it's, that has those cameras and then you go into gameplay. But for me, it has to flow. Um, so you're having the, watching the same character from the same point of view all the time. For instance, you know, the camera is on the back and is running through landscapes. Looking at that for a minute or two, it's going to get boring and you're going to lose people. So you need to make, create some dynamism in your shots. And that's why you show the kind of cinematic take on what it is. And you're using what ends up maybe being like a screenshot mode, right, or uh, something like that. Um, so f for me, it, it's, it's, it's not false advertising because we make it very apparent that this is how you control the character, this is how it looks when you play. But this, is, this extra fluff is to give you that emotion of like, wow, this world is amazing. You're never gonna maybe see the, the, this um, angle in the game, but it's a lovely way to show how beautiful this is. And it's actually showing more of the amazing work that you've put into the game that you wouldn't see otherwise. Um, as for like false advertising, there was, uh, I have a specific example for this, for a, a trailer for a Battlefield game. We had a shot where we had too many like vehicles or horses or whatever was in, in, in a shot. Um, because at that point where we were, they were capturing, um, those, that was allowed, like you could do that. But once we came to launching the game, you couldn't get as many of those vehicles in the shot. So we could just not care, but we actually went to the trouble of going back into the footage and replacing, removing the extra vehicles that you could not use, just so it's not you know, false advertising. And you might not, you're never going to see that, but we, we did that because it's, it's important that, he, that, that is a, you're showing the real game, right? Thanks. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, you were mentioning Battlefield, so uh, is the trailer team at Rofori doing trailers for other publishers? Uh, no. So this is all, you know, my, my past experience okay. is I, I worked at DICE for 14 years. I, pl I worked on all of the Battlefields uh, up until the very last one, 2042, yeah. And um, no, we don't work on that, but we, you know, some of us have our own companies on the side uh, that we still occasionally do something for other, like you do. Um, and it's something that we are allowed to do, um, but we actually don't have time. And as I mentioned, I'm a dad now. I don't have the time to, for anything else than my day job and my son job. Um, so, yeah, all the Battlefield stuff that's in the past, yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks a lot too for the talk. Um, I was wondering because we mentioned TikTok um, and uh, I don't know, the future of editing with ChatGPT, for example. Uh, do you have an idea of how, because now the, the marketing strategy is not that uh, only focused on release trailer and, and announcement and so on, but like there's a lot of video being produced during the making of a game 
And there's also an aesthetic of do-it-yourself kind of, uh, yeah, in, in, on TikTok, for example, the developers are um, more and more using it as a way to communicate uh, along the development and uh, until the, the release. Um, how do, do I put this? Like, do you think that this uh, kind of communication will somehow um, uh, change the role of the trailers uh, and, and the teasers? And also, like, do you feel like um, you will need to change the way you edit the trailers because uh, on TikTok is way more fast-paced or that kind of thing, or even like uh, you would need to make it more do-it-yourself even if you are pros? I don't know. Like, do, do you feel mm. that kind of change is happening? We already have changed our way of uh, making a trailer. Um, I don't want to talk for you, but mm. when you started, a long time ago, <coughs> um, you were doing two minutes, three minutes trailers. Even more sometimes. Even more. Yeah. And now it's just one minute trailer max. Um, yeah, we didn't have the whole capture the audience in the first five seconds. Like, because trailers, when I started back in 2002, it was, you, you might find a little compressed thing on the internet, or we actually had trailers sent out on the discs to events and stuff like that. Um, and at that point, you could show as much as you wanted and no one, they, everything, everyone was just eating that up. But over the years, that has been more and more and more and more and more compressed. Rapprochement? Was that the word? No, no, no sorry. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, this is a... Yeah, it's an internal joke, joke. sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's already changed a lot. And we've done... Uh, just, just the fact that we have to even make a square version of a trailer is like an insult. It hurts me. I bleed <laughs> when it happens. Uh, and then I finally got to terms with it. Like, okay, square is fine. It's, you can actually do, I mean, I grew up with almost like square images. It's fine, right? It's just back to, back to the 80s. It's great. Mm. And then all of a sudden, fuck, 916, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever the hell they're called. They're just horrible. And you have to redo everything again. And think, how do you change and adapt to this? We have to change. It's all a changing very fast around us. Um, mm, for yeah. example, it was only six years ago, but when I did the trailer, I like to like begin the trailer as a movie, you know, mm. a fade, a logo, uh, strange music. And you mm. don't do that now because the viewer will be gone <laughs> if you do that. Mm, mm. So, but six years ago, you could do that. Now, we don't. Yeah. But also still depends on if, if you're doing an announcement of a game mm. and you're doing it on, on one of those cool events where you're having an audience and they're hooked. They're actually you're sitting there. They're, they're going to watch everything there, probably. Uh, then you can actually do some of that still. But if we're doing it into social media, you might actually just cut off the first couple seconds just to get into the action faster. So it doesn't even have the, the build up and all that stuff. And again, I bleed. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but you have to change to survive. Oh, we're done. Okay. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Merci.